everybody. Tonight's show is going to be great because we're exploring a real murder mystery, the shooting of Tupac Shakur. Uh, now, this is interesting to me because Tupac and I have a lot in common. Well, first of all, we're both in show business. We're both covered in tattoos. We both like to keep it real, if you know what I'm saying. And we both have posses. What, you don't believe me? Let's take a look at this tape. Mr. Neil, I don't wait for no one. You the man, Kevin. What's the dilly, yo? Don't be dissing my homie, Kevin. Kevin wants to dance with yo biatch. Kevin be kicking it old school. We from the ghetto. Don't be dissing my homie, Kevin. Yo, watch out for I bust a cap on your ass. Step off, biatch. Shut your mouth. Kevin be keeping it real, yo. Word up, Mr. Neil. I got your back, Kevin. Kevin be looking out for the brothers. <laughs> my homies, they whack. That's right. That's right. That's right. Aye. Well, what about Tupac? First, a little background. Let's take a look. September 7th, 1996, Las Vegas. Thirteen shots were fired into the car of hip-hop star Tupac Shakur and his death row records boss, Shug Knight. Knight was only grazed. Tupac died six days later. Neither identified a shooter. A white Cadillac was seen speeding off, but the police never found it. The prime suspect and key eyewitness were questioned, released, and murdered. Who shot Tupac? Did Knight order the hit because of Tupac's plan to leave death row records? The case is still open. And we are on the case, so let's meet our panel. First is a journalist and author of Labyrinth, an investigation of the Tupac and the notorious B.I.G. murders. Please welcome Randall Sullivan. So, Randall, did you uncover a conspiracy or what? I think I did. Rolling Stone magazine sent me out here in the fall of 2000 to take a look at the LAPD scandal. And when I began to peel away the layers of media gullibility and police propaganda, what I found was that uh, that scandal was essentially a smokescreen over another scandal involving a group of black police officers who worked for Death Row Records and were also members of the Bloods gang. There was a lot of evidence that had been covered up by LAPD that implicated those officers in, in the murders of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls. Well, thank you, Randall. Our next guest, we knew Tupac. They toured together when Tupac was a backup dancer and he was a fun half of Kid and Play. Please say hello to Chris Reed. <laughs> Chris, I thought that was like the Queen of England invented that way. Yeah, that was my... That's but you my stole that from her. Yeah, I stole that from the Far Queen. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. So, Chris, do you buy into this conspiracy theory? Knowing Tupac and actually knowing Suge Knight as well, I find it hard to believe all the aspects of, of, of the conspiracy theory. I do think that there are some valid points that you make, but I do think other things, natural, common sense things, don't make sense. So I, I don't have all the answers, but uh, I do think it, it is a mystery of sorts. All right. <laughs> Our third guest also knew Tupac and was an eyewitness to the shooting. He's Tupac's former bodyguard and was in the car behind him when he was shot. He just released a movie about Tupac called Before I Wake. Please welcome Frank Alexander. And coincidentally, the name of the film was on your cap. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what did you see, Frank? You were there. Well, that's the whole thing. I was there. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is what's going to come out in the show today, is that I was there, and I don't believe that there's a conspiracy to Tupac's death. And we're going to hear about that later. Oh, we're going to hear about it, because I've read the uh, Rolling Stone uh, magazine article that um, you uh, wrote there, Randall, and I would like to say I was not interviewed for that article, and I've read some things in the article that I know for a fact I didn't say to you. I wasn't interviewed by So, Randall, what, what, what's up with that? He wasn't interviewed? Why, why well, didn't what's up with that is that Frank Alexander's been playing two hands at this table for a long time. Above the table, he's been telling everybody, Suge didn't do it. I don't think he could have done it. And I Shug, don't believe Shug, he did. Suge Knight, the Shug CEO Knight. of Death Row Records. Okay. Below the table, he's been telling the police that he's certain Suge did it in conspiracy with <laughs> and Orlando Anderson. He's done this repeatedly. And who uh, is Orlando Anderson? Orlando Anderson is a, was a member of the Crips gang who was attacked by Tupac and Suge Knight and a group of their... Uh, fellow blood gang members. This is in the early that evening. evening. Early that evening. Earlier that evening in the I see they weren't fighting over the Wheel of Fortune slot machine. No, they were fighting. Uh, what happened was uh, one of Shug's homeboys uh, convinced Tupac that. Uh, uh, he said uh, that very, very streetwise, did he not? <laughs> right? Again, you know, during, during the commercial break, we're going to work on that. You're all right. Gonna, all right. You, one, one, of his, one, of his, one of his fellow blood gang members named Trey. Right, right. Uh, uh, we can try homeboy again now. Basically, basically sick 
uh, Tupac on Orlando Anderson, who just happened to be standing there, according to Frank, what Frank Alexander exactly. told me. Exactly. How do you know that? Because you read my book. Got you no, back. I, no, but I, I, I will find out how you know that when we come back. Police. And you while know. we're away, I want you to work on that homeboy line. All right, we'll be right back. Take, <laughs> take a break. Take a break. Zone. Who killed Tupac Shakur? It's the biggest mystery in rap since the success of Vanilla Ice. <laughs> All right, let's 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 find out. First, let's recap here. Randall, you're saying the LAPD was involved, and um, and that Frank is playing two hands in this whole thing. And Chris, you're saying that maybe some of what Randall is saying is true, but it's still kind of a mystery to you. Yeah, this, this is the thing. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I feel like I have a familiarity with both sides of, of both of your arguments. Now, now, on the side of, of you, Randall, I, you, you have to believe, uh, in terms of a, a corrupt police department, which, which the LAPD was found out to be, that there were some shady things going on. And, and a lot of the things in your article point to it, uh, the controversy with Rafael Perez and, and, these, uh, uh, and these officers. But my point is, sometimes I think you can take it too far. And you, you tend to believe every single thing. That the, and remembering that these are corrupt cops. And they have given out a lot of information. I'm sure a lot of information that is true. But you gotta, you, you know, there's something to believe. You can't, you can't believe in them too much. You okay. know, so when they start spouting off all these other so stuff little, that's little a little wilder. A little corruption, maybe a little, little corruption. Frank, <laughs> you were there that night. You were closer than anybody. So tell us what happened. I'm going to be glad to tell you what happened. Because, Randall, you weren't there. You don't know me. You've never interviewed me. And your, your article in Rolling Stone, I, I found it to be just not true. You know, it was not true. There's uh, the Bible quotes, John 8, 32, tell the truth and it shall set you free. I'm free. I had no reason to lie about anything because I was there. I was an eyewitness. Okay. And what happened that night, uh, Kevin, was uh, we left the uh, MGM hotel after the fight. We left the MGM hotel. Uh, Tupac did get into an altercation with was Orlando after Anderson. Tyson fight? After the Tyson fight, he got into an altercation with uh, Orlando Anderson. So what happened after that? The, the fight occurred, uh, okay. as the MGM uh, tape clearly uh, shows. And Tupac and Orlando Anderson got into the fight. He threw a couple of blows. Uh, Anderson threw a couple of blows you back. Sure Knight was there? At first, when Tupac ran up to Orlando Anderson, as he was standing uh, at this one particular place that he was standing at uh, in the uh, MGM, he ran up to him and he threw a blow. Orlando Anderson threw a blow back. They got to fighting. Tupac's chain that he had on dropped. When, he, when that dropped, I grabbed Tupac, and at that time, I had him against the wall out of the fight. And at this time, the rest of the entourage was then kicking Orlando Anderson and fighting. That's where the fight took place in the MGM with Tupac and Orlando Anderson. Okay. Tupac was not involved after that point. Okay. And there was more fighting going on in the showroom than in the ring that night, apparently, because the Tyson fight was, was over like that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, okay, so, so Tupac leaves the MGM Grand with, with Suge Knight to get in the car. You're in the car behind him, and you take off to go to a club. Correct. We went to uh, Suge Knight's home first. Suge changed clothes. After that, we're driving back uh, from where he lived at in Green Valley in Las Vegas. We're going down Las Vegas Boulevard. As we're going down the strip, just before we got to Tropicana, uh, a couple of motorcycle, I'm sorry, a couple of uh, bicycle cops uh, stopped Suge. He got out of his car. Those guys are scary, by the way, aren't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he got out of his car. He opened up his trunk, and there was nothing in there. It was a brand new car. He got back in the car. We proceeded to go down to uh, Flamingo. We turned right on Flamingo. As we turned right and we were sitting at the light on Flamingo of Flamingo and uh, Cobo, the white Cadillac then pulled up, and the arm came out and fired the rounds from the back of the BMW into the uh, side of the BMW, hitting Tupac. Hit him twice. He was only struck two times, not four times, as your book indicates. Well, now, Randall, you didn't get the whole story because no, you didn't interview him. Uh, I got what, he, what he's not telling you is what he told the police. No, I didn't interview him. He's right. Why I, didn't you interview but him? But I did read because Which I had... Which police department I tell? LAPD or Las Vegas? Both. I, re I read no, the transcripts your interviews true. with both. The one, the one that, you, that David Kenner read to you over the phone when you thought that shit was going to have you killed. And then the other one that you gave to the LAPD at a bar in Laguna Niguel. In that's California. Not that's, that's not true. Oh, yeah, bar in Laguna this guy, Niguel. I'll tell you something. A bar in Laguna what would he be doing in Laguna Niguel? He, lived, he was living there then. No, I was not living in he Laguna Niguel. He was living near there. That's in Orange County, and it was not a bar. I met him at a Denny's restaurant. 
said when he was being tape recorded by the police and he was saying to them thinking that Suge Knight would never find out about it. Yeah, I think Suge, not, not, not even that I think Suge did, did it, I know Suge did it. And what about, what about, what about, that's what you said, that's what you said. I never said Oh yeah, you did. How did I say that? When did I say that? You said I'm certain that Suge Knight and and Orlando Anderson. That's where you're wrong at. What says who interviewed you? What says your voice is on the tape, What does it make for any employer to kill like his star employee. Well, he's, 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 well, my producer right now has got a gun named that name. Right? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Let me ask you this, right now. What about Notorious B.I.G.? How did he come into play in all this? Well, and why wasn't there, like, um, factions between, like, Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra, like, you know, East Coast, West Coast, Coonies, <laughs> you know? We'll get back to that after this break. We'll be right back.